Okay, so I'm ready to finish my two purses and version A and version B are both here. This one has a quilt extension attached to it and at some point I will attach a layer or two of fusible, fairly stiff interfacing where my magnet's going to go, but I'm going to do that later on. And for this one, my quilt extension, which will be what you see at the top of the bag when you open it, will be red to kind of match this red here. And this piece is 8 inches. I just made it a little longer than my piece, which is about almost 20 inches. And on this, I already planted in the center. If my extensions get cut about like this, I will have um, this reinforcement for my magnet area already in there, ironed on. And I just use scraps for that, but you want it firmly attached behind your magnet. And so you don't want to make them too small or too, too far from the edge because you want to hit that with your magnet when you attach your mag magnet closure. And then for my straps, I've got a layer of batting with a piece of fabric. The, uh, this is nine inches wide by about 34. And I have attached a layer of medium weight uh, interfacing to the back of this batik fabric and uh, iron that on. So I've got really three layers in this strap, which I think is going to go with the green bag. But I, I might change my mind depending on how I like them later. And then I've got this one. It's the same setup. I've attached a medium weight fusible and I have a piece of batting behind a piece of fabric and they're both, well all three are cut approximately 9 inches wide by 34 inches long and that'll give us enough room for a long strap. And I'm just going to quilt these using some kind of thread that I like with them. And I'm going to do that as quickly as I can. I have my two purse tops, my two jeans liners, my self extensions on this one, and my extra extensions for the, that one, and then my straps. These straps are actually cut selvage to selvage. When I'm making a bunch of straps out of the same fabric, I try to go the other direction. Once I saw a customer with a bag she bought from me with this type of strap, back when I didn't put the interfacing in, and really started to become concerned that I should make the straps as reinforced as possible, because some people will put 20 pounds of stuff in their bag. I'm gonna trim this out, preserving as much of my design as I can. I'm just going to attempt to cut this pretty straight and true and not have to waste much. I also like to check for square. If I need to, I'll resize my jeans liner a little bit. I can cut this down more if I need to as well. So my bag ends up 19 inches wide and that's how wide I make my extensions. I decide after some deliberation to make them three inches wide. I have enough to make them a little bit wider, but I just decide that at the last minute so everything will fit. And so I'm going to cut these so that they're 19 inches, but I am going to just do a slight little angle so that my inside liner is just a little bit inside. And I would, I would do it a little more even if my jeans liner was undersized. But you can see I'm just angling this a little bit. I'm going from oh about where I'm starting here I'm going about an eighth of an inch over. And so from there I want to end up at 19 inches. 
so this is the line I want to cut on. And so I'm just going to angle that off about an eighth. And if I haven't said it much already, I'm going to say it again now. You're really just working back and forth with these two things, trying to be sure that they're going to kind of fit each other. And I'm going to trim this out, again, preserving as much as I can. This one I think I'm going to trim folded in half, but I'm going to be careful to, to line this up evenly against my line here so that I can keep things perpendicular. I cut this at three inches. So I think this is gonna work and I haven't angled these sides yet. down a tiny bit. Just really cutting off an eighth. So this is what we're going for with the strap. And what we're going to do is we're going to iron down one side at just about three quarters of an inch. And once we've done that, we're going to iron this piece over to meet it. We're going to make a strap that is thinner on one side and thicker on the other and it'll be padded with batting and reinforced. And it's a nice comfortable strap on your shoulder that doesn't dig in at all because it's not a rigid, hard uh, shape like you can get sometimes with certain kinds of webbing and certain kinds of uh, seat belt strap, which I've also used as for messenger bags and stuff. And really, I, I tend to just I tend to eyeball these kinds of things, but and I'm using steam, but again, I'm going to turn my steam off and shoot steam in as needed to kind of try to save my fingers. You'll kind of shape this as you're sewing it, as you're feeding it through your machine, and so it's not going to be exact, but it's going to be really nice. I fold it the way that I want it, and I kind of shape it with my hands as I go. Go slowly on this first line of stitching so that you don't end up with your strap getting wider and narrower and wider and narrower. If it's helpful to you to pin this beforehand, you could go ahead and do that. After I'm done with this first row of stitching, then I switch uh, to a regular foot with an edge guide and I stitch again through all layers 3 16ths of an inch away from my original stitching. When I'm done, my straps look like this. I'll have four of them. Uh, you'll have two. These jeans aren't in very poor shape, but if they were, I would want to patch it. And so if you want to pretend there's a hole where that X is, I would put a patch. And I'm just doing two layers. You don't really need to do that. And it's going to be matching to my extension, it certainly doesn't need to be. And I am going to free motion this patch, but you don't need to do that. You could use a straight zigzag or anything you like to do. Um, but I'm just going to make this sort of a messy, zigzagged. Patch, um, such as you might put on other jeans. And then I'm just going to use my little scissors. So I just trimmed this patch out with my scissors like that and because I did stay pretty straight with the fabric, I can 
use my nail brush on this and get this to start fraying really good. And then I can trim off the bulk of this. You want to be mindful of those pockets. If they end up being too long for what you're doing, you can always shorten them, reshape them in any way that you want. You can even uh, resort to just sewing this shut along here if you determine for some reason that your pocket's not going to be usable. If you look at the back of the waist, this kind of, this line isn't very straight. And so often to get things to fit nicely, I'll just trim a little bit of this off to just kind of straighten that out a little bit. So now I'm really set up to assemble my bags and um, I need a magnet for each. Alright, so I'm going to stitch the outside of my bag um, and I'm going to stitch it twice to reinforce it. I'm going to use a 5 8 inch seam allowance and I don't pin. If you are more comfortable pinning, you should pin. I find that with this edge guide, pinning becomes less and less of an issue. If you've never boxed a corner before, this is all you're doing. You want to take this seam and match it up to this line of the bottom of the bag. And so it's basically, you're pinching like this, and then you're flattening everything out, and then you're attempting to uh, it's easy with these stripes to see, but without a stripe, you just need to keep this centered in the middle of this area. And you can kind of fold like this and see that you seem to be right in the center because you don't want to box your corner accidentally like this. So when you fold that, you're going to see that you're not matched up very well. And so What you do is do this. You'll pin here so that you can see if you like the size and shape of your bag once it's turned. And I like to turn it by sticking my hand in and kind of grabbing around that pin from the sides, not from end to end, but from the you know, my hand is in there like this. And I'm grabbing like this, and then I'm just pulling this out around it. And then I can kind of shape that corner. And then I can tell whether I like uh, the size and shape of my bag before I sew it. So I'm gonna do my other one. And I can do this, I can do this much differently if I'm trying to figure out how I want my bag to be shaped. So this one I'll make much bigger. So I've, uh, I'm going to have a big base to my bag on this one. So you can see if I did my bag like this, I would have this big, huge, it would be shorter and it would be wider across here. And the way I'm planning to do it is more like this. And you can see that this is narrow and this is very big. So I'm going to change this one to match this one. And 
before I sew them, of course, I'll actually measure them and make them match each other. It's time to attach these things together. And so I'm going to start by stitching these ends together at 5 eighths and I'm going to do that twice. You don't have to do yours twice, but I'm going to do mine twice. Okay, so this piece gets a little bigger at the top and that's going to attach to the top of the bag. And so I want to attach the smaller end to my denim liner. And so I'm going to pin the small edge to the denim liner right sides together and I'm going to be very aware at all times of where these metal parts, including the zipper, are. I'm going to stitch at 5 eighths, but I'm going to be very aware when I come near these metal things with my needle that I don't hit that with my needle. So I'm just going to pin these together. For this bag, I am basically matching up the side seams of the jeans with the side seams of the extension. I'm going to do the other bag differently. When it comes to putting everything together, getting through all of these layers, especially where this seam meets up to some of the other seams can be difficult. And so sometimes in these types of situations, you can just offset this seam. And so you can see that this seam isn't gonna fall Close, very close to this and we did angle that a little but it's such a slight amount that it's not going to be an issue for us if we just pin this offset from this seam and then it'll be offset from our outside bag seam when we get to that. As you're doing this distribute any extra fullness you have by repinning here and there as you go. A little stretching can help. If you really can't get them to fit resize either your jeans liner or your quilt top until they're within the range that you can get them to fit together. Here are those parts that I'm being aware of. So I'm going to stitch around this on this flatbed machine. There are always lots of ways to accomplish these things depending on your setup and your time and your patience level. You can turn this inside out and use your free arm if you have one. It's a good idea to somehow mark the top of your zipper so that you don't forget that it's there and break your needle. A zipper foot would have been the best way to go with this, but today I just go slow and walk, which I often do when I don't have a whole stack of work. As I'm doing this, I'm letting my foot go part way over these pointy rivets, and I go slow and walk in those areas especially because it's so easy for that rivet to throw you off track quickly and make you stitch uh, in a line that's not straight. In fact, on one of the rivets, I do backtrack and restitch that area right away. Okay, so you can see that I pressed both of these so that my jeans are flat and everything presses towards my quilt extensions on both of these. And now, because I'm going to top stitch this on this machine that is my uh, flatbed, I am going to turn these inside out to do them. And so I'll stitch like this and I'll use my hand to, to feel that everything is where I want it to be as I go, as I'm feeding through the machine. This is a good time to bring in top stitching thread if you want to do that, but I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to use my edger foot. After this series is finished, you probably won't hear much from me for a while. I'm going to do a few little tips and odds and ends that I've been meaning to get to, but I also mainly have to catch up with a bunch of work that I have to do for some shows and some orders and get ready for the spring market and things like that. Um, I'm not sure when I'll be doing another big project but 
uh, I won't disappear or anything. If you want to contact me, um, I love hearing from you. I love to see pictures of your projects. And so please uh, comment, keep in touch, whatever you feel like. I'm also going to go and very quickly iron on this fusible where my magnets, my magnet on this one will go. These are the four parts to a purse magnet, the male and the female, and the two washers. And I want to install my magnet in about this area here. I don't want to get too close to this top because after I stitch this at 5 8 and go to top stitch, I don't want to be competing with that. This is a little bit narrower top than I sometimes do. And so I'm going to uh, stay pretty close to the bottom of this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mark this one and do it and then I'm going to flip it and mark the, turn it inside out and mark the other one and get them matched up. And when it comes time to finish the bag, I have to be very careful to keep those still matched up. So what I'm going to do is measure. This is a washable marker in case I end up uh, needing to get this mark out of here. And I'm going to make two little lines. I have interfacing behind there. I have this, it's a leather working tool, so I use this, but you want to poke through here without stabbing into your finger, so just be very careful to keep your fingers spread if you come through here with um, your seam ripper or your little scissors or something. I like to pre-poke this little hole for myself. And this thing is sharp on the end, it's very sharp on the end, but it's not sharp on the sides, where of course your scissors would be, your little small scissors. Again, my fingers are not right behind where I'm poking. Okay. Pop on here and then add a washer. And then you want to flatten these over, and you can make them go out or in, especially with this side of the magnet. I like it a little bit better if these little wings are bent outwards. There's probably a better way to fold these. <laughs> I've often just folded them against the side of my sewing table if I'm just doing one and I'm in a hurry. Now the top of this purse opens and closes with a magnet. to do the other one. For the next step, I have to decide which straps go with which bag. And I kind of feel like this setup is a little too noisy, and this setup is a little too plain. Oh, I do like it. But I'm going to do this like this, I believe. Hard to decide. They would both be nice. I think I want to pick up the yellow in that with this yellow. And so I'm going to do it like this. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pin these on here. And then I'm going to I'm going to go try this on and stand in front of the mirror and decide if I like it like this. It's only pinned through one layer, so I'm just going to be careful when I'm doing that. I think I'll probably end up going a little shorter than what I have here. I'm just going to use my ruler here to mark 
where my straps go. I like them eight or nine inches apart. I have many times taken a purse apart to flip a strap that got turned the wrong direction or uh, shifted positions when I uh, sewed it together at the end. I've never done that if I basted the straps on. I've only done it when I've pinned it and thought that I would be able to keep everything in place. So I've checked and double checked that I have them on the way that uh, I want them and so that I'll be able to live with them. And now I'm just going to baste them. My straps are attached now, but I'm going to pull them out of the bag so that when I'm finalizing these corners, I don't accidentally sew one of them into the corner. That would be most unpleasant. And I'm just going to use this, use my trusty little ruler to mark this. So I'm going to mark this one too. So I'm going to stitch these and I'm going to stitch them twice. Oh, <laughs> not like that. I'm not going to. We just trim these off. And when my daughter was little, if they were big enough, she wanted them to be little doll hats. <laughs> we're getting really close now. 